Hi, I'm Farai and this is my code lab. Today we are going on to 1.4 which is palindrome permutation where given a string we need to write a function that checks if it's a permutation of a palindrome. A palindrome is a word or phrase that's the same forwards and backwards. A permutation is an arrangement, a rearrangement of letters. The palindrome doesn't need to be limited to just dictionary words so we've got tact coma and it's true because you can make tackle cat and at kokta and whatever. So, yeah, that's it. Oh, man, I'm on the solutions page. Actually, I think it's easier just to work off the solutions page so I don't have to fly back and forth. So, let's go in and answer the question. So, as you see, it's the same forward and backwards. So, there's race car. And we reverse it. We get race car. Right? Now, what do we know about something which is the same forwards and backwards? That means the letters are balanced, so to speak. So that means that every letter appears an even number of times. So, oh yeah, there are two rules. So... If um, the str dot length is divisible by 2, then that means that every letter must be odd. Then, uh, no, even. Every letter... be even so as you can see here this is even so r there are two r's no no this is not even this is odd my bad so, okay. let's see if it's easy even yeah let's take noon noon right and there are two of those and oh there are two of those so yeah that works so if you have oh no or non or un or no no then yeah that rule applies as you can see because it just resolves that otherwise else you can only have only one odd letter you can only have one odd letter and everything else even so um, let's make our function now where I will make a frequency table where um, so the function I'll make a freak table a freak table nice a freak table Yeah, I'm going to make a frequency table. Then I'm going to then I'm going to So I'm going to count odds, right? Like, let's say it's like a max odds, for instance. So let's do, if it's odd, then uh, odds is equal to one, else odd is equal to zero, based on the previous conditions, then 
Hoop through and sub. Tracked. So let's make our function now. So we're gonna go function per <laughs> such a fun name. STR. Honestly, I don't feel like doing question 1.5, but I have not there yet, so. <sighs> CHRs equals... I equals zero. I is less than is then a plus plus right. If C H R S S T R I then C H R S S T R no, that's the wrong way to do it. Uh, S T R I plus equal one. Else C H R S S T R I is equal to one. So that's how odd. So so, uh, so that's our frequency table now. So odds is equal to so we have str dot length divided by two equal oh that's a cool one <laughs> equals to zero. I wish that was the symbol for triple equal. Anyway, so that means if it's even, then no, otherwise one. So four Yeah, let's do four C H R of C H R's dot values. I mean I'll just write the proper logic when I need to, but of values and then if C H R Like, like, it will just give me, like, it will yield back the values in it, which have been defined in there. So, if chr mod 2 is equal to 1, then odds... Mm, then if odds is less than zero, return false. And then here we can just return true, right? And yeah, so that's what we're doing. So... Yeah, we're making a frequency table. And yeah, we make the frequency table. We odds and then we cross over. So I'm just thinking if we could just eliminate one of these and we could do that by tracking the odds and evens as you go. That could work, but 
you're introducing more comparisons here. Because not only do you need to add, you then need to also check if it's odd or even. So I don't know if saving a loop is faster than... Uh... In fact, um, yeah, why don't we just uh, try and see and I wish I could like just why can't I just lasso something more okay fine ah, oh, screw it okay um, what would it look like were we to like track things as you go for instance so yeah you'd still have chrs equals to an empty object then four i equals zero and less than str dot land i plus plus then uh like i don't think this is a good approach per se but it's possible if you want to save a for loop so if chrs str i Oh, yeah, yeah, I forgot odds. I need to also save odds. So right now they're zero. Uh, yes. STR. I. Let's equal one. Then if, again. CHRS. C R -A S S T R I mod two equals one then odds odds plus plus else odds minus minus then if then else C H R S S T R I is equal to one, then odds is equal uh, plus equal one. So as I said, the reason I'm doing this is tracking the odds and even as I go. So like you edit one and then you check if it's turned into positive into odd or even. So if it's become odd, you add an odd. Otherwise, you just subtract it because it's no longer odd, as you can see. And then you just return odds are. Oh shoot! Oh my prior code is wrong. Turn and return turn odds turn um str dot length or two is equal to one 
So if it is, then we return odds equals zero. Otherwise, odds is then or equal to one. And yeah, that works because we're just like tracking things as we go. Though I don't know if it's faster to access more data or it's faster just to like have another loop. And I'm just thinking of the previous code here, which is wrong. It's SCR, so then for each values. Why am I doing odds minus minus? Odds plus plus. That means if odds are greater than zero, then you return false. No. Wait, wait, wait. Mine didn't make... I think mine made sense. Minus, minus. Because you saw an odd, right? So it's like one. Then you go to zero. And then there's zero. And then if you minus, then... Yeah, so what I did before makes sense. So... Let's look into the solutions, shall we? Uh, this question, it helps to figure out what it means to be a palindrome. It's a string that's the same forward and back. Therefore, to decide if it's a palindrome, we need to know if it can be written such that it's the same forwards and backwards. What does it take to be able to write the same characters forward and backwards? We need an even number of almost all characters so that if half can be on one side and half on the other side, and most, the middle character can have an odd count of one. Oh, oh dang it. Why am I saying odd? Oh, wait. No, no, that doesn't change anything. Yeah, it changes nothing. Because only one character can be odd. Well, I've forgotten to factor that in. If there were like three odd characters, then that wouldn't matter because we're just going to decrement that thing. So yeah, I'm on the right track. Even though I didn't see it. So sorry, I am sounding so defensive. So you know that tactical wa papa is a permutation of a palindrome because it has two T's, four A's, two P's, two P's, and a zero. And an O, that O will be the center of all possible palindromes. To be more precise, strings with even length, if after removing all non-characters, must have all even count string of odd, must have exactly one with an odd count. So, of course, an even string can't have an odd number of exactly one character, otherwise it wouldn't even be, be an even length string. And yeah. So the first algorithm, it's pretty straightforward, is to count how many times each character appears, then we iterate through and make sure no a character has an odd count. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I think this is using an array of numbers to track the frequency rather than an object. Mm, yeah, so it's doing the frequency table, number two. Can't optimize big O since we'll always have to look through. However, we can make small incremental improvements. Because this is relatively simple, it can be worthwhile to discuss some small. Instead of checking the odd counts, we can track as we go along. Yeah, that's pretty much what we're doing here. And as soon as we get to the end, we have our answer. Yeah. 
it's clear it's not necessarily optimal. It has the same big O and might be a bit smaller. We got rid of the final iteration through the table, but now we have to write two extra lines. You should discuss this interview as the alternate, but not more optimal. So yeah, I think I succeeded with that. I really think I should walk through the examples if I'm going to do such things. And yeah, I consider this a success. So yeah. I do have time still, but it's like, what? About 15 minutes, but that's not enough to do much. So I'm just going to save my efforts for 1.5, the one away, because I know I've struggled with this lots of times. So I want to actually be able to do it. I know I've probably like peaked in the answer, so it's like marinating in my brain <laughs> already, but... I think even though it's marinating there, surely I need to like figure my way through. Probably I'll see an interview question that's been asked before. I'll need to like build my intuition. That's the hard thing. Because I think the one thing from interview practice is, of course, you can just cram the answers to like this whole book. I don't even know how many questions are in here. There are hundreds of so answers and questions in here. Like, you can definitely cram them in, but wouldn't it be better if you could find, like, a way to approach these problems so you could, like, I don't know, just algorithm design, really. Like, just a systematic approach to, like, solving these things. That's what I'm looking for, so... If I was to, like, find some random question, like, uh, I don't know, <laughs> like, um, uh, I don't know, there's, uh, yeah, like, some random question were I to have found, um, yeah, like, I could just approach it systematically where, even if I've never seen it before, because, like, the thing with cramming is that you just kind of, like, expect this question to come in the same form. And it'll be kind of suspect if you just write out a solution. So, yeah. Uh, do you get what I'm saying? I'm, like, going around in circles. <laughs> so... Chapter 6 with the math and logic puzzle seem quite interesting, but I'm going to, like, take a break from that. So, hesh, I'm talking too much now. It's been about 25 minutes, which is about half of what I'm supposed to do, but, yeah. I'm saving my energy for 1.5, which I've struggled with. So, yeah, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. Uh...